Sam Altman declares Code Red as OpenAI gears up for a much more intense battle with Google. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, we have an exciting one, some very quick follow-up to our five big stories to watch in AI episode from just yesterday. Now, going back to November, it was very clear that the big story was everything surrounding Google and its AI strategy. So that includes Gemini 3, Nano Banana Pro, the rise and performance of their TPUs and what it means for NVIDIA, and specifically how all of these things change the competitive landscape for AI. Never before in the three years, the exactly three years since ChatGPT launched, have we seen such a narrative inflection shift from OpenAI over to Google. More and more, you were starting to see the language of inevitability around Google, which for some was all-inclusive and for others, maybe more specific to things like multimodal AI. But no matter what, OpenAI was facing very serious competition, not just with the tool itself, but also with public perception. Now, add to this, of course, that Anthropic dropped Opus 4.5, and that model has done nothing but get increasingly rave reviews the longer it's been out. All of which comes together to last night, when actually after I went to sleep, the information came out with an exclusive report around a war memo from Sam Altman to the team at OpenAI. Basically, three years to the week after the launch of ChatGPT led Sundar Pichai and Google to declare their own code red, now the roles have been reversed, and Sam Altman on Monday of this week told employees at OpenAI that he was declaring a code red to focus all of their resources on improving their core asset, which is ChatGPT. So what does it mean to actually improve ChatGPT? Well, it sounds like there are a couple pieces. Altman apparently mentioned more personalization for the chatbot, including letting ChatGPT's users have more customization around the way that it interacts with them. Altman also said that they wanted to improve model behavior. So as the information put it, people prefer the AI models that power ChatGPT more than models from competitors including in public rankings such as LM Arena, to other priorities including boosting ChatGPT's speed and reliability as well as minimizing over-refusals. Over-refusals in this case refer to when ChatGPT refuses to answer something that is actually a benign, non-harmful question. I guarantee that you have had that experience and it is just enormously frustrating when you're not asking it for anything complicated or scary or challenging, and yet it still refuses to answer. It is one of the most frustrating experiences you can have with a chatbot, so it makes sense if they're trying to improve the experience of ChatGPT to cut down on those sort of blockers. Now, as part of this announcement, it sounds like we're not just getting a renewed and reinvigorated commitment to ChatGPT, but an actual pause on some other initiatives. Altman, it sounds like, explicitly said that to focus on ChatGPT, they were going to delay other initiatives. The one that everyone is talking about is advertising. Now, I've talked a bit about OpenAI's communication around advertising, frankly, in a frustrated way. I think that when Sora 2, the model, was launched alongside Sora, the application, it felt pretty inevitable to a lot of people that OpenAI was going to move into ads at some point. It just seems like the only way to support a full-on video-based social network. Also, there are clear opportunities for ad integration into the core ChatGPT experience. And yet OpenAI, specifically Sam Altman, has continuously been super circumspect about it, saying that no decisions have been made, rather than doing what I think he should have done, which is basically say, ads are a great way to keep things free. Ads don't have to suck. We care most about user experience and we're not going to let ads screw that up. And while we have made no final decisions, there is likely an ad integrated future for many of these products, which you will get to see a mile in advance because we respect you as the user and are going to treat you like adults as we talk to you about our plans here. In other words, I think that OpenAI or Altman might be slightly overestimating people's unwillingness to deal with ads and underestimating their frustration at feeling tricked or deceived. In any case, to the extent that there are ad things going on, those plans are now on pause. The information also writes that Altman said the Code Red surge to improve ChatGPT meant that the company would, quote, delay progress on other products such as AI agents, specifically those aiming to automate tasks related to shopping and health, as well as developments on their Pulse product, which is the thing that generates those personalized reports for ChatGPT users to read each morning. Additionally, there was some new model talk. Now, you'll remember that in the predictions for December episode, I said that I thought that the most likely area where we would see a new OpenAI model this month would be around image generation, not even just to regain momentum, but to keep feature parity and people operating within the OpenAI ecosystem. It does sound like this is a priority, but it's not clear from the reports that we got how far along their next generation image generation model is, writes the information. 
Altman said that other key priorities covered by the Code Red include the image generating AI that allows ChatGPT users to create anything from interior design mockups to turning real life photos into animated ones. No mention on how far along their next version of ImageGen actually is. But one big nugget that basically everyone is seizing onto is this one. Allman said that the company is planning to ship a new reasoning model next week that they claim is ahead of Google's Gemini 3 in OpenAI's internal evaluations. Now, the information adds that Altman said that the company also had more work to do on improving the ChatGPT experience. And while I think it's right that those experience upgrades make a huge difference when it comes to things like how long people are spending in the app and how much they're switching to other models, when it comes to just narrative momentum, there is certainly nothing bigger that OpenAI can do than drop a reasoning model that actually feels ahead of the competition. Now, there's certainly chatter that those models exist. In a podcast appearance, OpenAI research leader Mark Chen said, we have models internally that perform at the level of Gemini 3, and we're pretty confident that we will release them soon, and we can release successor models that are even better. ChatGPT leader Nick Turley dropped a Twitter thread around the time the information story broke, seemingly to try to set some of the framework for where the state of the competition is right now. He wrote, today, ChatGPT is the number one assistant worldwide with around 70% of assistant usage. New products are launching every week which is great. It pushes us to move faster and keep raising the bar for what an AI assistant can do. In a clear nod to Google, he continues, search is one of the biggest areas of opportunity. ChatGPT now accounts for roughly 10% of search activity and it's growing quickly. As more people ask ChatGPT not just for answers, but to take action on their behalf, we see lots of room to expand. He concludes, our focus now is to keep making ChatGPT more capable, continue growing, and expand access around the world, while making it feel even more intuitive and personal. So let's talk about how people receive this. Overall, the vibe is excitement. People are fired up. Part of that is just because competition is fun to watch, but part of it is because it benefits us. However, one thing that people noticed that was kind of conspicuously absent, at least from the reporting, was that there was no mention of coding models. Swix called this out in his post about Code Red, and there were many posts like this one from Bill Berkey who wrote, Dear Sam Altman, I read in the Wall Street Journal this morning that OpenAI's Altman declares code red to improve ChatGPT as Google threatens AI lead. Make codex work, dot, dot, dot. Sincerely, vibe coders. Now, two thoughts about this. First of all, it may be that Altman and OpenAI are making a determination that the flank that they're feeling most threatened on when it comes to Google Gemini is general consumer usage that doesn't really touch the vibe coding space. Remember, we saw a bunch of charts recently around how Google Gemini is catching up in terms of monthly downloads and is now ahead in terms of time per session. And so it may be that leaving coding off is intentional because they don't see that as a major front in their battle with Google, at least not right now. The information points out that broad perception of the competition between OpenAI and Google is going to be key to OpenAI's ability to raise the additional hundreds of billions of dollars they're going to need over the next few years. And so as much as coding might matter to a lot of enfranchised users, maybe they're determining that it's not the thing that drives those top line numbers that the casual investor, for example, is going to read. The other thing to note, though, which is always an important caveat, is that we are seeing this secondhand. We are reading a report based on what Sam dropped on Slack that was read by the reporters, not by us. If the reporter who saw it missed a mention of coding or just decided it wasn't important, we could have the wrong perception just because they are dictating what we're seeing. It's also possible that the tone of the Slack message wasn't a super comprehensive list of everything that's going to be worked on versus everything that's going to be deprioritized, instead being something that's a little bit more off the cuff and much more about the emotional and team rallying cry than the specifics, in which case it would be easy to read too much into any one thing that's included or not. Now, some think that Sam might know that whenever he writes something like this, it's going to get leaked, and so was perhaps using it to generate exactly the type of response that he's getting from me covering it on this show. Beth Jezos writes, I bet the whole Code Red story was a PSYOP and OpenAI is about to drop a massively better model. That post was actually a repost of AI leaker Jimmy Apple's account that had a picture of Altman with a Santa hat on and the message, hype, 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 hype. While I'm recording before markets open on Tuesday, Knockout Trader did point out that SoftBank had a bit of a weak overnight session after the Code Red news broke and said, we'll be interesting to see if this pressure will find its way towards US names being linked to OpenAI in any way. For example, will we see ripple effects in Oracle stock tomorrow? Overall, though, mostly people are just super excited. Jeffrey Snover captured my feeling exactly when he wrote, Three cheers for competition. OpenAI made Gemini get better, and now it's the other way, and we all benefit. Look, man, I was staring down a December where I didn't think we were going to get all that much in terms of new models, and now it seems like that is very much not the case. 
and we could be playing with a new advanced reasoning model from OpenAI in the very near future. It is definitely the case that the company that crystallized this field for so many now finds itself on the back foot. If you go to the prediction market sites, the betting around questions like which company has the best AI model by the end of 2025 is distinctly in Google's favor right now, and the gap has been increasing, not decreasing. Although it is worth noting that after the news broke, in one market on Polymarket, Google dropped from 92 to 88%, and OpenAI jumped from 0.5% to 7.6% in just a few hours. All in all, I think we have a major competition on our hands, and I'm not counting anyone out. So friends, there you have it. Code Red has been declared, and now we get to see what happens next. That's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always, and until next time, peace.